Hey, welcome to Weld.com, home of TIG time. Hi, I'm Mr. TIG, and we're on site in my shop in Utah Springs, Kansas. It's midsummer, so it's nice and air-conditioned in here. Yeah, we get a lot of questions on, on different types of welding. One in particular we get a question on is uh, purge cups and trail cups. What do they mean? Why do you use them? Okay, now you've seen us use this jumbo gas lens before uh, on various different projects. Now you can look through the, the glass and see the, the part that you're welding, or you can use this for getting better coverage, gas coverage on stainless steel and ink and L's, and of course titanium. Now if you go beyond the pattern that this puts out, it puts out about an inch and a quarter, inch and a half pattern, uh, especially when you get into titanium welding. If you're getting into heavier than 16 gauge titanium, you're going to have to add argon or an argon pattern. And that's where this trail cup comes in. So what does the trail cup do? Well, it attaches, attaches to your torch, just a thumb screw, and you have to have another line here for your, uh, your argon. So I've got argon flooding here and I've got it flooding in a straight pattern. Now what we're going to do today is we're going to show you how to build a trail cup. And one of the reasons for that is, is I want to explain why you have a trail cup and what it takes to diffuse the gas and why do these things cost so much. And, and they do. And uh, the reality behind it is these are stainless steel and you're going to see that it's a 304 stainless. We're going to weld these with 308L filler material. And we're going to show you the whole process, and at the end of the day, you're going to look at it and say, is it better to buy one, or can I build one? So uh, we're going to show you how to do it. Okay, now this, the shell of this is 304 stainless steel. It's about 18 gauge material, and I had it designed where overall it's about 3 inches long. So if I'm welding stainless steel, it should leave a nice silver color, pretty close to silver color. Same thing with the titanium. Uh, if, if I'm going to be welding up to about an eighth of an inch thick titanium, this will work fine. If you go anything heavier than that or your dwell time uh, is just too long, you may have to have a cup that is much longer. So this is very standard, very common. And I just want to share it with you in case you want to build one. Anyway, three inches long, 304 stainless. I weld it with 308L filler material. And I'm just going to kind of turn it. And you can see there's a hole punched in there. We're going to put a diffuser in there in a minute. Now, this, this portion here, we actually uh, we, we had to have it manufactured. And we had them machine this, this little circular device. And it actually holds the cup in place. So you'll notice that we've got a hole in the front here. You know, we used to mill. Drilling stainless steel is tough. So we used to mill, punched a hole in here. Now, all of these materials have a little bit of oil on them. So in order to get the oil off, uh, these things have just turned out to be great for me. They're called Easy Wipes. It's isopropyl alcohol, and it's already on a rag for me. So uh, I don't have to carry an 8-ounce or 12-ounce container here of, of alcohol. And alcohol works great. You know, people ask me about acetone and alcohol. Both of them are great, and I use them all the time. So you, you wipe everything down. Make sure that there's no oils on here whatsoever, especially in the surfaces that you're about to weld. So I wipe this down. This had machining uh, cutting fluids on it, so I'm just going to wipe it down as well. And we're going to show you how to build this in two segments because it just takes too long to do it in one segment. But the, uh, the first part of it is after you wipe everything down, weld up this shell complete. And that's what we're going to show you next. So let me get my gear on and we'll show you the welding process. Okay, so I'm welding 304 stainless using a... Uh, 308L filler material. And just dab it in here. Corner welds on stainless are not always that easy to work with. They just don't want to flow right. But this one's doing okay. And so I finish out the weld, I terminate it, oscillate it a little bit, back off on the amperage, and that weld is complete. Okay, so here's the shell. It's, it's finished welded, or nearly finished welded, the shell portion. Now we're getting ready to put the second piece in place. 
And once we do that, we'll tack it, weld it complete, and then we'll polish part of it. Okay, so this is, uh, this is really phase one. What we're going to do is we're going to let this cool off and then we're going to polish this. Now there's going to be two different uh, types of polishing that go on. They're, they're going to be phase one polishing and then we're going to put special screens in and then we'll do a final polish. So uh, as soon as this cools off, I'm going to go over the uh, polishing wheel and, and show you what we do there. Okay, now what I did was what's called a rough polish. I have a polishing wheel back there and it really is a deburring wheel. Uh, it's about a medium or a, a 80 grit deburring wheel and you can see it takes off the discoloration and and I took some of the weld off kind of rounded off the corners got rid of any sharp edges whatsoever I rounded the top surface off uh, so I, I've got the shell ready for assembly and what I mean by that is that I've got a little thumb screw and I think it's got an 832 thread on it it's brass now the thumb screw only has to go thumb tight when you're when you're putting this thing on a pyrex cup just lightly tighten it it'll stay there so the second part of this is we're talking about the argon diffusion process and i put this in almost all of my specialty devices and we'll get a b-roll of this a real close-up but what this is is uh this is a centered bronze and what it does is uh it it becomes a, a gas lens uh, of sort so what I do is I put it inside the cup and then uh, I'm just going to hand tighten it for now and later on I'll, I'll go ahead and tighten it for sure. So the first level of diffusion comes from, from that little device. So the argon coming in, it's already starting to diffuse. So what we're going to do is uh, we're going to close out this segment and show you the second part and the other diffusion that we go through. So it goes through several levels of gas diffusion. So thanks for watching part one of TIG Time. I'm Mr. TIG.